What's up, everybody? Happy New Year Sunday Sessions, episode 36. This is an opportunity for us to hang out for about 45 minutes, answer your questions, provide insight about growing your e-commerce storefronts, and just your mindset in general. So for anybody who doesn't know me, my name is Eric Castellano. I'm the founder of Amazon Lit. It's a consulting company where we help Amazon sellers scale out their businesses and their operations to multi-million dollar businesses, from side hustles to full-time. Um, so a few things I'd like to really discuss on this call, specifically for growing your Amazon business in 2023. Um, you know, every year since I started selling on Amazon about 10 years ago, it would be 10 years in July, our business has grown year after year. Um, this year, it's up 20% revenue, profits up about 12%. So everything is cool, right? But the reason why we continue to grow is because we continue to innovate and stay ahead of the curve. Right. So these are some things that we're doing in the coming years that I recommend a lot of you do to scale out your business. And these are a lot of the things we're going to be covering in much more thorough detail um, in inner circle. And some of these things we'll be touching on in e-sellers or I as well. Um, but the first thing I really like to talk about that is going to allow you to scale your business exponentially in 2023 is brand direct deals. Right. Or exclusive relationships as exclusive as they can come on amazon.com right essentially what that looks like is you becoming the direct supplier on amazon for a brand or a manufacturer right where you're managing their listings you're controlling them you're eliminating the competition by implementing some things that amazon offers to prevent other people from selling the items right and you're essentially Managing the reordering, the refunds, the buying, the projections, the profits, and all you're requesting of that company is to give you the lowest wholesale prices, right? So scaling out some brand direct relationships will absolutely allow you to grow your business. This year in brand direct relationships alone, we did five or $6 million. So it's about 10% of our company, you know, but those margins are much higher. You're talking 25, 28% margins opposed to our normal 17, 18, 19% margins with everyday wholesale products. So that's something definitely happy new year, everybody. Y'all should be capitalizing. Uh, do you include boxes, product boxes, not shipping boxes and poly bags in your cost of goods or as a supplies for tax purposes? We do not include it in your cost of goods. You should not include additional costs in your cost of goods, whether you're inputting it in your repricer um, or for tax documentation. Those costs should be calculated as separate expenses. So if it's shipping, it should be a separate uh, shipping expense. If it's for supplies, it should be a supply expense. Um, because what that will do is essentially skew your cost of goods. And if you ever wanted to reference that product, you know, and see what you got it for last time, you wouldn't really have a direct answer to what you paid for it because it's skewed because inside of the cost of goods, you have your shipping expenses as well as your poly bag and FN skews and any tape that you use. So I do not recommend doing that. Getting into wholesale, I just saw your email about ASD ticket. I'll see you at ASD. Yeah, Harry, absolutely. So for anybody that doesn't just know, ASD is happening February. I think it starts on the 26th. So February 26, 2023. Um, if you don't know what ASD is, ASD is one of the largest wholesale trade shows in the country. You know, there's over a thousand wholesale distributors and vendors there, tens of thousands of people. It's a great opportunity to meet with new distributors. I saw someone just asked here how to find suppliers. So for example, going to ASD is a great place to find suppliers. Now, also during the week of ASD, we host an Amazon seller event. Um, it's called Business Growth Tax Live. We fly in speakers. Um, it's a couple hundred bucks to attend. We also, if you buy multiple tickets, you can save discounts for additional tickets. So you can bring your team members or your family, your brothers, your wives, your, your husbands. We want you to bring the whole family to these events. Um, and the link is right in our Instagram bio. So you can just smash the bio. Click on it, lock in those tickets. Last year they sold out, so do not wait until they sell out because unfortunately if they sell out, there's nothing we can do to get you in. Danny said he broke 100K this month. Nice, we'll be sending you proof soon to get our award going for the 500K this year. Amazing, Danny. Amazing, I love to hear it. So Danny, what did I meet you, Danny? I feel like I remember it was in your garage. <laughs> 
you're your business partner to call me. We had a great conversation. You guys were hesitant, and then you joined these sellers or I, and now you're in the inner circle, and I would hope you're going to renew inner circle for the coming 12 months, and uh, we can help you hit that 500K. Congrats on the 100K. Do you believe chasing infinite growth is worthwhile? No, I do not. You know, and that's why this year we're scaling back. We're not looking to grow revenue. What was our original goal? Our original goal was to hit $100 million on Amazon. Uh, but after this year, you know, when we did a little over a 20% increase in revenue and only about a 12% increase in profits, we realized that we should really scale back, well, not back, but continue to do what we're doing, focus on fixing some of our processes and getting more profitable, right? Because if we could gain an extra 25% in profits, you know, you're talking an extra two, two and a half million dollars in profits for the year. That's the goal for us. So, but what all your goals should be, right? If, because you, most of you are probably newer, your goal should be scaling out the business, right? Obviously you need to make money. You need to focus on profits, but in your, your year one, year two, the goal should be reinvesting all of your profits back into the business, turning that inventory and getting a nice um, influx of products into Amazon to really produce the sales that you need to produce to hit the numbers that you need to see in 2023. And that leads me into my other topic of ways to grow your business in 2023 would be to branch out to more categories. Got to branch out to more categories. You know, I had a phone call with a gentleman yesterday or maybe two days ago now. And he does four and a half million dollars a year and all he does is sell toys, right? And toys, I probably do four and a half million dollars a year in toys, right? So what that tells me is I'm not capitalizing on the toy market enough because if this guy, he's only selling toys and he's doing four and a half million, right? And we're doing close to that, but we sell a lot of other things. It tells me that there's a lot of opportunity in the toy industry and the toy niche that I'm missing out on. You know, same goes for baby and health and personal care and outdoor and sports. All these categories have a lot of opportunities. And if you're only sticking to one because you're familiar with pet products or you're only sticking to one because you've been selling beauty for seven years, right? That's going to limit your growth. And anything that you do that limits your growth prevents you from hitting the milestones that you'd like to achieve. So that leads me into, into point number three it would be in order to get into more categories, you need to locate more suppliers, right? So you need to get uncomfortable. You need to do more things like come meet us out there at ASD, right? Especially if you're an e-seller's right, you do the walkthrough, we walk through the show floor with you, we introduce you to vendors, then the next night you come to BGHL, you get to network with two, 300 Amazon sellers and hear speakers talk about what they're doing to grow their Amazon business. And then the next day, if you're in inner circle, you come to the inner circle event, right? But like all these things are designed to help you grow your business when you utilize them. Uh, my account has been suspended over a year. Is there any way to get it back? It depends what it was suspended for or too short. You can send me an Instagram on, uh, I mean, a message on Instagram. We do all for that service. Um, it's a couple hundred bucks to jump on a call with Sebastian. He'll walk you through the pain points, give you a solution. And then if you want us to fix it for you, it's an additional service fee. Did you guys have restock limit issues in December? I was hearing a lot of people got killed. How can we avoid this? No, we did not have any restock issues in December. We didn't have any. I think we've ever had any restock issues except for when they got real strict on an ASIN level during COVID back in like 2020. Um, but what you can do to prevent restock limits, preventing your growth moving forward in 2023 is track your 13 week trailing sales. That's what Amazon's tracking when they're making decisions to allocate your um, storage limits. They're tracking 13 week prior sales, right? So they're looking at how many orders you sold in the past 13 weeks. And I guarantee if you pop that open right now, it will reflect exactly what your storage limit is. Right. So you need to increase your trailing 13 week orders. Right. What that means is increasing your sell through, making sure your days of inventory are at greater than, let's say, 35, 40 to be healthy. Making that tells Amazon that every 35 to 40 days you're moving out your inventory. And for anybody who doesn't know where that is, if you click the little top left hamburger of Seller Central, you go to inventory and then you click the drop down to inventory planning. In the top right, it tells you your inventory turns. It's important to know your inventory turns. You know, if your inventory is turning six times a year, that means you're selling products on average every 60 days, right? So if it's moving 12 times a year, that means you have a healthier inventory turn and you're moving inventory every 30 days. 
That means you have a quicker return on your cash flow because you're able to take the cash that you invested into those products and reinvest it into other products because you're getting it back much quicker than having to wait the 60 or 90 day cycle if you have less turns on your inventory. Right. So that's one of the main things you need to do is manage your inventory better and make sure that your trailing 13 week order amount is is substantial enough to um, allow you to continue to send inventory into Amazon. Ideal inventory terms per year. I'm at 19, which I think is way too high considering my in stock right? Yeah, 19 is too high. So 365 divided by 19. That means you're moving inventory every 19 days. You want to get that closer to 10 or 12. All right, Jay, you get that closer to 10 or 12, your business will be much healthier. 19 is a little too high. It means you're selling inventory too quick, which means one of two things. One, you're either pricing too aggressively or two, you're not buying enough inventory, right? Because if your average turnaround is 19, 20 days, that means you could essentially be increasing your orders by, by 50%, right? Because if you're buying for 20 days, you should really be buying for 30. So let's say you're going to buy 20 units. Now you buy 30 units, which is a 50% increase, uh, which if you're able to do that on a lot of your products, now you're going to be saving time, making more money, Right, increasing your order sizes and streamlining your whole your whole process, which is great. I opened up a line of credit. What I should watch out for? Just make sure you're spending it correctly, right? And make sure you're paying it off. Or should I check all your services? Uh, most of them are right here on Instagram. The link on our bio. Um, our primary service is eSellers Ride, which is our three thousand dollar mentoring program, where we basically guide you on the growth of your business. And then the goal is to get you to an inner circle from there. Do you recommend a company to help with store deactivations? Yeah, we offer that service. You can send me a DM, I'll send you a link. Uh, my in stock rate is only 53%. I do find a lot of what I buy ends up selling far faster than I anticipated, even though I do not price aggressively. Yeah, that makes absolute sense, man. So that means you could go a little more aggressive. Um, and while I got you here, I'm just going to pop up and see what my, uh, what were we talking in stock, right? I think mine's even lower than that. My in stock rate, 68.45%, which is Amazon considers low, but I don't care. We move so much inventory when you're in the wholesale or retail or online arbitrage game, you move so much inventory, it's nearly impossible to keep a healthy in stock rate. And if you try to, you just lose yourself trying to do it. What's my personal 2023 goals? Um, so personal 2023 goals, I'd like to be in better shape. Um, you know, I definitely, the end of 2022, I started focusing a little more on my health, hitting the gym more consistently, uh, being a little more mindful of what I'm eating. I got this watch that like tracks my health and stuff, which has been super helpful. It just made me more aware of my like calorie intake and how much movement I do throughout the day. So definitely I have a health personal goal for 2023. And then obviously with the businesses continue to grow uh, our Amazon company, you know, the goal is to maintain right around 60, $65 million a year um, for 2023. But like I said earlier, increased profits about 25 to 30%. So doing an extra, you know, two to two and a half million dollars in profits in 2023 would really be the goal um, for us. And then obviously with Amazon lit continue to help, you know, thousands of you build out your businesses and leverage our knowledge to help you um, where you're at, because essentially what we come and do, right, especially for inner circle is we meet you in your business where you're at, right? So if you're doing 150K months, $150,000 months, right, we come in and we say, okay, this is what you're doing, this is what you need to do to hit $500,000 months, and this is what you're going to do to get there. Right. And then you take action and implement it. We follow through along the process to make sure that you're hitting those goals. Um, you know, and then obviously continue to grow with my partner, Catherine, and, you know, continue to be a, um, a brother and a son and a, and a participating family member and show up for my for my relatives and my family is, is always a priority for me as well. The signing up for Eve Sellers or I get you into the ASD walkthrough with you. Um, so the only way to get into the ASD walkthrough is to be a part of eSellers or I. It's not open to the public. Um, the walkthrough is like 500 bucks and um, it's it's only available to people who are part of our community. It's like a bonus. What's the best method to get a grasp on true profit, the Amazon fees, storage, etc.? Um, so first of all, you want to integrate with some sort of software like A2X. 
um, definitely to track your expenses. And then you want to track three metric numbers, right? Three numbers. Very easy to get them. And I'll do a follow-up video exactly on how to do this. And I posted a video probably 18 months ago on how to do it. And the, the process hasn't changed. So the three numbers that you definitely want to know are your production cost per ASIN, right? This is super important. We call it our PCPA, production cost per ASIN. This is essentially taking your expenses for the month and dividing it by the amount of orders you produced that month. Right? How many orders you packaged out of your bedroom, your basement, your storage facility, your warehouse, your garage. Um, and that will give you the cost that it takes you to get one product out the door to Amazon. Right? That's your production cost per ace in your PCPA. So let's say your PCPA is $1.50. It costs you $1.50 between labor, rent, everything to get one product out the door. Right now, the next metric you want to know is your gross profit per ASIN, which is very simple. Right, that's essentially any repricer will give you gross profit. Right, whether you're using Be Cool, um, Seller Snap, Go Aura, they'll tell you your gross profit. So essentially, you just take your gross profit um, and you divide it by the amount of orders you sold in that time period. So let's just say your gross profit is four dollars per item, right? So now we have our PCPA, which is $1.50, production cost to get the product out the door. We have our gross profit per ASIN, which is $4, our profit before expenses per item, right? And now you simply subtract PCPA from GPPA and you get your NPPA, which is your net profit per ASIN, right? And the, the reason why that number is important, so right now we're at $2.50 for our net profit. So that tells me that every time I sell a product, I am making $2.50 on average is going back into my pocket. All right, those are super important numbers to know. And you should be able to rattle them off. Like if I jump on a live next Sunday and I say, hey, uh, you know, tech news, what's your PCPA? You should be able to tell me that immediately. You know, super important metric. And that goes into point number four, uh, understanding your numbers. Right, so so the, the four growth tips to grow your business um, were more brand direct deals, selling in more categories, finding more suppliers, and understanding your numbers. Super, super important. I can't stress it enough. Literally talk to thousands of Amazon sellers who have no idea their numbers. And it's it's doing you a disservice. Um, have the Amazon fees affected you? And if so, what changes have you made, if any? So yeah, the Amazon fees affected everybody. Uh, the Amazon fee increases with the uh, peak fee fulfillment service charge, the fuel increase surcharge, um, you know, increased in shipping, just everything. That's the reason why our business did 20, 22% more in revenue and only about 12% more in profit, right? So that additional pointage was lost to those service fees plus the increase in cost of goods. I know you guys do LTL or FTL now, but when you were doing LTL, how are you going about carriers? Because I just made my first LTL and truck never came to pick up. Amazon seller support is not doing anything. Yeah, Harry, so we recommend not using Amazon Partner Carrier unless you're going with Amazon Freight. Tyler, what's up, brother? Happy New Year, man. Um, we recommend using other instead of Amazon Partner Carrier when you're on the shipment creation page on Seller Central. And then we recommend using a broker like Unishippers to schedule, schedule your freight um, separately from Amazon because that stuff happens all the time, Harry. Um, what would you say to build a relationship with a local grocery store to buy bulk items with them? So first thing I'd do is walk in, I'd ask for a manager. Um, I'd bring a business card, I'd introduce myself. Hey, my name's Eric Castellano. I own a business locally right here. Um, I'd love to purchase some of your products in bulk. Um, essentially, you don't even have to put them out on the floor. I could come pick them all up right out the back. You don't even have to uh, bring them out on the floor, stage them on the shelves or anything, saves your employees the cost of doing that. I'll literally just pick them up out the back door. You know, and then that will open up the conversation. You'll be like, well, you know, we've done that before, but this, and then you just listen to his reply or her reply, and then you give a rebuttal based on what they say. But it's really just about opening up the conversation. Uh, we buy clothes outs occasionally. 
You know, the only thing with closeouts is you got to understand that the invoice, especially if it says closeout, so liquidators in the name, the invoice will work for approval on Amazon, right? If there's any account health issues, which isn't the end of the world. So what I do when I buy closeouts, I, I make sure a few things. One, I have expiration dates. The last thing you want to do is buy a closeout and everything expires in 45 days. Two, it's manifested, meaning it tells me how many of what UPC is on there. Because a lot of times what we'll do, let's say like this happened maybe, I don't know, nine or 10 months ago, we bought a full truckload of closeouts. It was like Walgreens, Rite Aid closeouts. Right. So I got the manifest. I'm running through the manifest. I find one product on there with about 400 items, one UPC that was literally going to pay for the entire truckload. It was only like eight, maybe seven percent of the entire shipment, too. So there's hundreds and thousands or thousands of other units in the shipment. But I took those 400, sold them on Amazon, made all of our money back for the entire truckload. And then anything else I sold on Amazon was just all profit. And then what we did was we took maybe three or 4,000 SKUs, like nail polish and just random shit. We sold it all for a dollar at the flea market, right? So like there's there's definitely opportunity in closeouts. So Brandon asked, are the fees going back to normal now since Q4 is over? And the answer is no, they will go back on January 15th. And his follow-up question was there, is there a fee increase coming this month? It comes in February. It's the uh, Amazon pick and pack fee increases. And they happen every February. Uh, Jorge, I'm considering it. Well, East Coast meetup. I feel like they're always in like Miami or Las Vegas. Even though that one we did, I don't know. I don't think you rolled out to that or hey, even though we did have a nice lunch, me and you and your wife um, over here in New Jersey at a little diner. But yeah, you're right, Jorge. We're due for one. Harry, first time going to ASD, what you should do. So definitely pop into the ASD online, uh, asdonline.com website. Explore their vendor directory. Start looking at some of the companies that are going to be there. Better yet, start contacting some of the companies that are going to be there. Better yet, start placing an order or two with some of the companies that are going to be out there. Because you're going to get a lot more clout when you walk up to a booth and you just place the $10,000 order or two $4,000 orders with the company. And you're like, hey, it's E. You know, pleasure to finally meet you. I'm the guy from so-and-so company. I just placed, you know, two $5,000 orders from you. I'm really excited to grow this relationship. I had to stop by and say, what's up? How's the show going for you? Boom. Open up the conversation. Get to put a face to the name. It's instantaneous. It's like it's so much. So many people are missing out. They just want to be keyboard warriors. It's tough to really substantially grow. Listen, it's no problem to do 500, a million, even 2 million and, and never leave behind your computer, right? But if you wanna hit those next level numbers, you gotta get out into the market and hit, hit the industry events, you have to. Yeah, Amazon is absolutely still good for 2023 as a beginner, absolutely. So let me just pop it up real quick. I got it right here. So let me give you some metrics on some of our community members for 2022. So I'm just going to tell you how many $10,000 a month awards we shipped out in 2022, right? These are how many people just joined our community and grew their Amazon business. Uh, 43, right? So 43 people did their first $10,000 on Amazon in 2022. And then another 38 of those people did their first $50,000 on Amazon and so on and so forth. You know, we got another, what, 37 that did 100K, um, another 11 that did 500K. So absolutely, Amazon, it's not too late to start. Why can't I find any good wholesale products and are you able to find them so easily? Um, so a lot of it has to do with experience, Lord Santino. You know, uh, having an eye and knowing what to look for. Also, I would like to know how many suppliers you've reached out to. Because whenever anybody says they can't find any good wholesalers, I always ask them, how many have you reached out to? And they usually say, ah, 25, 30. You know, you, before you can say, hey, you got to at, at least reach out to 100 at the bare minimum. At the bare minimum, you at least got to reach out to 100. Yeah. Oh, also, before we wrap this up here, so another cool thing that happens in Las Vegas at ASD, 
um, or BGHL rather. It's where we hand out all the awards, right? So like this award right here, this is our, I think this is our 500K a month award. Like we bring you on stage, we recognize you uh, for your achievements. It's it's pretty cool. Nick Bryant, how can I stop drinking so much in 2023? Go to an AA meeting, bro. <laughs> You know, it's a decision. And also, just please, man, message me if you want to talk on the side. We had a meal for the year. Yeah, I know. And uh, we got a call on the seventh, I think. Me, you, Bernard. Uh, we got a we got a call on the seventh, Justin, which I'm excited about. Talk a little bit about inner circle. So, congrats on hitting that mill, man. It's well deserved. Absolutely well deserved. So, listen, my friends. Happy New Year. Have a beautiful rest of your day. This is a rickety wrap for Sunday Sessions, episode 36. I usually check in here every Sunday. You just pop in, make sure you turn notifications on on YouTube so you get notified while we're here. And Amazon FBM just said we did his $109,000 since first two months selling on Amazon. So I'll leave you with that. Have a beautiful day. Stay lit. Adios, my friends.